go. Hey everyone, Mike here. Um, this is just going to be a quick video because I wanted to just talk about what happened last night, Australian time, for uh, the final fighter reveal for Super Smash Bros Ultimate. As you all know by now, it was in fact Sora from Kingdom Hearts, so I guess there was uh, some truth to that leak that came out about it, and I am totally blown away by this because on the one hand, I kind of thought that like, yeah, the leak was like credible and it was likely that it was going to be Sora, but I guess I didn't quite process what that would mean or how big a deal that would be for me and so many other people who love Kingdom Hearts and love Super Smash Bros. And I don't know, I guess I didn't just, even though I thought, yeah, it's most likely going to be Sora, my mind hadn't like accepted that it was possible because of the whole Disney thing. And I just, I just think this is absolutely remarkable. And this was probably the highest of high points to end Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. Like, Yes, I'm disappointed Crash Bandicoot isn't in. Yes, I'm disappointed Waluigi didn't get in. But this reveal trailer and everything to do with it was insane. Like, it was just... I, I originally thought, and I've watched a bunch of people's reaction videos online to just see what people thought. When it was back in uh, the original sort of reveal trailer for the game with Inkling, it picked up straight after that, right? Um... I kind of thought it might be Master Hand or a Smash Bros representative character. That's kind of where my mind went. But yeah, then essentially as soon as we saw that Mickey chain on the Keyblade and uh, yeah, as soon as we saw that, I guess we knew when I freaked out and then um, the theme from Kingdom Hearts starts playing and Sora just comes out gliding around and yeah, it was incredible, and I love how faithful uh, an adaptation it is from the Kingdom Hearts games. Like, having the Timeless River costume in there, having his Kingdom Hearts 1, 2, 3, and 3D costumes, as well as the Valor form, Wisdom form, and Final form. Sadly, the Master form doesn't get a shot in, um, but just incredible. Uh, the special moves, I think, are great. Having the magic cycling between Faraga, Thundaga, and Blizzaga, and then Sonic Blade as the side special. I guess having a counter as the down special is um, pretty, like, typical these days, but I kind of thought it would be like Reflega from Kingdom Hearts 2, but overall just, just incredible, and it looks like he's so fun to play, and Floaty has an amazing recovery, and, and that's kind of like, Kingdom Hearts always was kind of about I don't know, like, it's a very aerial combat game. There's lots of, like, air combos and stuff, and I think Sora translates so well into this, and I want to do a full kind of review and discussion of the entire DLC fighter passes, like, reviewing every character and how I felt about them, but I I'm tossing up between this one and Banjo-Kazooie as to which one was sort of more, um, more, like, revolutionary for me. I do think, like... Both of them, to me, are, like, incredible that they happen, but Sora, like, getting through that Disney hurdle, and it's clear that they've put a lot of effort into kind of making Disney totally non-existent in Smash Bros, except for the Mickey keychain, but otherwise there's no trace of Disney. Um, I would have hoped there would be a couple more music tracks, but I like the music that they've chosen. Hollow Bastion is the stage. I would have thought it would have been either Destiny Islands or Twilight Town, but Hollow Bastion is really cool as well. And the trailer even had a bunch of nods to Kingdom Hearts as well, like fighting Sephiroth, um, Cloud being there. Uh, he's with the red-headed villager on the Congo jungle stage, which really looks like Destiny Islands. And yeah, this was just a brilliant moment that I couldn't believe. I did record a reaction to it, but the sound has not worked, which is really annoying. Um, so I'm not going to post it because you can't really hear what I'm saying in it, but... I was totally shocked, despite the fact that there was a leak. Like, as I said, I don't think my mind had processed that this could happen. Because for a long time, Sora has been one of the most hotly debated characters to be in this game. Like, a lot of people saying, no, he definitely can't be in it because of Disney. But clearly, strings were pulled, deals were made. It's the same as Banjo and Kazooie. Like, people were saying, no, they can't be in because they're a Microsoft rep. Bam! Strings get pulled, things happen. And, and I think in terms of finality, 
Sora actually makes a lot of sense as well. Like, I, originally I thought Waluigi made a lot of sense to be the final character because he's been kind of one of the most requested characters and it's become a meme that he's not in the game. And I think following along from, like, characters like Ridley, like, Ridley, Ridley being too big for Smash was, like, a meme in the community and then Ridley got in. So that's why I guess the whole time I was going along this path of, like, well, Sakurai is kind of referencing the fandom and trying to please fans and Waluigi would have been a huge one for that in my opinion but Sora definitely makes sense as like one of the most complex characters to probably negotiate for and just being a huge character like let's not underestimate how big Kingdom Hearts is like it's a huge franchise for nearly 20 years now I think the first game came out in 2002 it's appeared on Nintendo consoles Waluigi is a meme character, but definitely wouldn't have the same response as Sora, I guess, like the reach as well. So many people I know who are like, oh, now I have a reason to buy Super Smash Bros. Um, have said that because of Sora being in the game. So I think reach and commercial interest, Kingdom Hearts is huge. And I'm just so stoked. Again, like King K rule always wanted him in. Like the five characters, I guess, that I really always wanted in were Crash, Waluigi, King K. Rool, Banjo and Kazooie, and Sora. Like, I, I think they're probably the top ones in terms of like realistic choices. And you know what? I got three of those in this game. You know, one in the main the main roster, K. Rool, one in the first fighter pass, and one in the second fighter pass. And you know what? Sephiroth as well would have been definitely somewhere in my top 10 or 15 characters and I got him and I'm just really pleased that I feel like so many people will kind of finish this fighter pass really happy like even if there's a few miss characters like you know for me like arms and pyre and mithra and of course byleth weren't like characters that I necessarily wanted but I'm happy they're there and then even Steve didn't really care about not into minecraft but commercially and like popularity wise like great decision and then throwing Banjo and Kazooie in there like for the fans and yeah it, it, this game means a lot and I hope you're really satisfied with how things have ended up I am I can't wait to play as Sora um and this is just my preliminary thoughts on Sora I do like I said want to do a round up on the entire Smash Bros roster um at some point in the next week so I will be doing that now that it's finished but yeah thank you so much Sakurai for making this game I um I do a bunch of videos on here I'd love for you to check out some of my other stuff and subscribe to my channel check out my podcast which is the main thing I do on this channel um but yeah thank you so much for watching stay tuned for more Smash Bros content in the future uh my name's been Radio Mike I'll catch you later but I went to run my hand through your hair and I noticed you were attached to string You were a puppet this whole time You were attached to string <laughs>